Okay, Dosti here with Dosti's View. One of you, I think it was um, Nicholas or Nicola, asked what makes a good Talamark ski? Well, in simple terms, it's a ski with a nice, smooth, round flex. That's all there is to it. But <clears throat> there's more to what makes up a ski and how you get a nice round flex than just that description. So I thought what I would do today is um, kind of share with you how to read a ski because you can get a pretty good idea of how a ski skis just by looking at it and understanding what the features and components are that make up a ski, okay? Um, so um, we've kind of gone over my quiver before, and I've told you before, my BMT, I think I called them 94s, but these are, uh, is that right? Yeah, a B, I call them BMT 96s. It's a BMT 94, okay, uh, which um, is made by Vocal. It's 94 millimeters at the waist. That's kind of my sweet zone is in the 90s. Uh, I, I come from a background where we had really skinny skis. I learned to telemark and alpine ski on skis that were 65 millimeters wide, okay, or, or narrower. And <clears throat> when the first fat ski came along, it was 76 millimeters wide. And I remember when the first 90 plus millimeter wide skis came along, I thought they'd gotten, they'd lost their minds, okay, but then things kept getting fatter and fatter and pretty soon everyone was raving about skis that were 130 millimeters at the waist. I never drank that Kool-Aid. Not that I didn't uh, try it and it was fun to ski really fat skis and still is in the right conditions. But for everyday use, you want something that's a little more closer to 100 millimeters. But there's a lot of other things that go into a ski, okay? The waist width is your foundation for flotation. That's what determines whether it's a narrow or a fat ski overall. And generally, if it's less than 90 millimeters at the waist, it's considered a narrow ski. It's better for hard pack and firm conditions and it edges better because it's narrower. Um, and skis that are wider than 100 millimeters at the waist tend to be for soft snow conditions, powder, mush, and um, variable conditions like crud because it gives you greater flotation, okay? So, um, so the first thing to really consider in a ski is what we call the side cut. And that is uh, the, the dimensions at the tip, the waist, and the tail. Okay, these RT86s, um, they're not new by any stretch of the imagination. Their profile is, what is it? I'm reading upside down. 128, 86, 114. So it's 128 millimeters at the tip. Okay, it's 86 at the waist and it's 114 at the tail. And that gives a side cut, if you do the math, 128 minus 86, you get 42 millimeters, but it's really, that's from there to there. And what you, what you really want to be concerned with is one side. So half of 42 is 21. So it, there's 21 millimeters of side cut from the tip to the waist. And that's the dominant part of the side cut that kind of determines what the, um, the turn radius is. And the turn radius on these RT86s is about 18 meters. So if you just tip this ski on its edge and let it do the turning without driving the tip too hard, it's going to make an 18 meter radius turn. And personally, that's um, a radius that I like. I would consider that to be a medium radius turn. Um, it, you can get skis that have more side cut and they will have a tighter radius. Uh, although the side cut is not the only factor that determines that, but it's a dominant factor. And if there's less um, difference between the tip and the waist, you'll have a larger radius turn. 
and that would be for going faster and doing GS turns instead of slalom turns. Um, <clears throat> so that's one factor to consider. Uh, so you want to look at side cut as um, one of the primary indicators of how uh, quickly a ski will turn. Okay. There's other things. Now this ski here, the RT86, this is more of a classic old school ski, not just because it's narrower, but also because it has camber. Notice the gap here down by the waist. That's a natural springiness in the core. When I squeeze this and let go, it expands. Now, what does that do? That gives you a springiness in your skiing and it'll give you a rebound between your turns. The ski will help kind of spring you into the next turn. Skis that don't have that, um, that doesn't mean they may not have a springiness, but it doesn't come necessarily from the camber. These uh, BMTs, they have, they're a flat ski. <laughs> there is no camber here. Now that doesn't mean they're not springy, but their springiness comes more from how the core is built. And that's something that's you have to flex the ski to, to notice it, and generally with a flat ski, you've got to ski it to know if it really has nice rebound. These Solomon Zars are another example. There's um, very little camber here, maybe eight millimeters, whereas the RT86s, I'm just shooting from the hip, that's maybe 15 millimeters, a centimeter and a half. Uh, so dramatically more than the um, Solomon Czar here, okay? Um, the Solomon Czar is a lot wider, okay? At its waist, it's 111. And at the tip, though, it's not much wider. It's, uh, I think it's, let me read it here if I can. Oh, uh, it's not there. Where is it? It's got to be written somewhere on this ski. Well, doesn't have to. Yeah, 131, and this is 128. So um, only a few millimeters wider at the tip on this Solomon Czar, but much wider at the waist. So a lot less side cut, okay? Like it, we're talking less than, probably less than 15 millimeters. So this is not a super turny ski based on the side cut, but it is a turny ski or a maneuverable ski because of something else that's going on. And that is that it has rocker in the tip and in the tail, okay? Um, so let's contrast these. So, um, and these are kind of the extremes in my quiver, all right? Um, the Solomon Czar has an early rise tip. You can see the gap building in here, and it builds all the way to the end. It's a slow rise rocker, which means um, it doesn't um, kick you up in the snow, but it does lift you up when you're downhill skiing, and it'll lift the ski when you're skinning. The tail with uh, rocker in the tail there, that's good for a couple things. It's good for if you're um, taking air um, and you're landing switch, then you aren't going to uh, dig your tip in when you land backwards, okay? The other thing that this rockered tail does is um, it releases out of a turn very easily. In fact, it releases so easy because of the way I tend to ski, it causes me, if I ski normally, the way I normally ski, um, I'll wash out. So I have to be very careful if I'm skiing a, a, a ski with a rocker tail, not to um, want to rebound off the tail, which is what I tend to do. Um, that's just because of the kind of skis that I grew up skiing, and therefore I developed a technique that um, depends on that. So this RT86 has a little bit of a rise there. That's so that you can do a little fall and leap maneuver if you need to side slip down a steep couloir, kind of go back and forth to get past a narrow pinch zone. But otherwise, it's a fairly, what we call a flat tail. And in combination with the camber on this ski, I'll get a really strong rebound by weighting the tails of my ski at the end of a turn. Whereas if I weight the tails of my ski 
with the czar, unless I am careful and don't overweight them, I'll wash out. But <clears throat> when the snow is deep, that rocker tail allows me to release out of a turn without having to completely lift out of this, the snow, which when it's deep is practically impossible. So this is a great powder ski, okay? Now, the one thing that you can't read on a ski is the flex. Remember I said you want a nice, smooth, round flex. So you can flex the ski and you get some idea of how round it is. This one, actually, it feels fairly round. I mean, it's bending more at the tip and at the tail than it is in the middle, okay? But it's a smooth flex, and I would call it medium soft. Not super soft, but medium soft. These are T86s. Same sort of thing. There's a lot more give in the tip of the ski than in the tail, but overall it's a smooth round flex. And this one is a little bit stiffer than the Czar, which I would expect. And now my faves here with no camber, and these have kind of a, an early rise tip. It's not as dramatic as the Czar, but it is going on. And it has a light amount of rocker at the tail. It's very subtle. So it kind of acts like a hard tail, but it releases out of a turn easy. These, the flex, it's actually the softest of all of them. And yet, despite that, this is something that, this is, this is part of the magic of the construction of a ski. There's certain things you can tell by reading the ski and other things, the only way you're gonna know is one, by flexing the ski, and two, you gotta get out on the snow, okay? But hopefully that helps you narrow the field on some skis that you're considering for Telly. And um, then, you know, you need to go out there and actually ski them. And if you're not sure how stiff they are, just bring your skis to the shop and flex them next to them. Because you know what your skis ski like and you can tell what that flex is, right? And then you just compare to the skis that you're considering and you know whether that other ski is stiffer or softer, all right? So I um, hope that helps you. And uh, remember, if you got a free mind, that means you're not gonna follow the herd and you are free to free your heel. So uh, get on out there, spread telemark, and uh, we'll talk with you next week. Adios.